G'day, I'm Yuki San Dev, and in part 5 of this series, Unity for the Absolute Beginner, we will be looking at prefabs. So, prefabs it is today. Uh, these might take you a minute or a week to fathom, but it's most definitely worth it because 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to need them. Prefabs are a special type of component that allows game objects to be saved in the project for reuse. They can be called into any scene at any time and obviously useful for objects that you will use many times over or even something you don't want in the scene right away but you can instantiate later. You can have them as simple or as complex as you like. So let's get into it. Alright, first of all, uh, let me clear out some stuff from the previous video. Alright, that looks good. Everything gone, just like a fresh new project. Okay. So let's first create something for our objects that we're going to create to fall on. So right click in your hierarchy window and select 3D object in plane. I'm going to name mine ground. Reset the planes transform up here and give your plane a color or texture. You remember how we did that in the previous video, right? I'm going to use this burlap texture. Remember, there is a link in my description for any files I use with these videos. And a little cleanup down here with an images folder. Actually, while we're at it, let's create a prefabs folder too, which we'll, we will be using shortly. Okay, now let's create a cube. Right click hierarchy and select 3D object and cube. Give it a name. I'm going to call mine Lolly. Reset its transform as well. Now click the constraint button in the inspector transform window and let's type in 0 0.5 in the X window of scale. We're just basically halving the cube size. Now drag the cube up in the air a good distance to drop from. Uh, I think I'll make mine uh, hole number 3 on Y. And I'm going to turn my gizmos off so we can see the cube properly. So this is going to be our master prefab. So we need to set everything up that we need now before we create the prefab. You can edit it later, but it's just easier to do it now because we can test it. Um, so you remember how in the last video we created a rigid body and also a bouncy material. So let's do that again. So click on Lolly and add a rigid body. And we're also going to add a physic material in the project window and call it bounce. Edit the properties of bounce in the inspector to 0 0.8 for bounciness and bounce combined to a maximum and drag the bounce material onto our cube lolly. Click on Lolly and make sure it has the rigid body and the bounce material. Okay, now we're going to make two materials with different colors. You remember how to do that? I'm going to make the first one blue. And the second one red. Alright, after that, drag the blue material onto the lolly cube, and the cube should now be blue. Right, now press play, and let's make sure the object falls and bounces. Cool. Okay, so now we're ready to make this a prefab. So, drag the lolly object from your hierarchy to the prefabs folder we created in the project window. Now notice that the lolly in the hierarchy has now turned blue. And that's just letting you know that it's a prefab. Okay, so now do the opposite and drag Lolly from your project window into your hierarchy window. So you've just basically created another instance of that prefab. You can have as many as you like. Um, and as you would expect, the new instance is in the same position and has all the same properties as the original. Um, also, just a note, you can drag the prefab directly onto the scene and specifically place it somewhere else if you want to. Um, okay, drag one more into your hierarchy for a grand total of three. 
and separate them so we can see them all. Okay, so let's say I want to change the color or material of just one cube without affecting all the others. So click one of your Lolly instances in the hierarchy and in its inspector mesh renderer materials, click the little circle and select the red material. Now one cube should be red while the other two remain blue. Uh, you will now see a blue line on the left side of the materials in the inspector. This means that it differs from the original prefab. Also in the inspector at the top, you will see an overrides drop down. Click it and you can see that mesh renderer has been altered from its original. Click mesh renderer and it will show you a comparison between the original prefab and this one. See how one says blue material and the one you have selected was changed to red. So you have a few options here. If you're happy with it, you could leave it or you could revert it back to the original prefab material, which was blue by clicking revert. Or if you like the red color and you would like it on all the instances, you could apply that change to the original prefab, which would change them all to red. So let's do that. Click apply and select apply to prefab lolly and boom, they are all red. Uh, if you click the lolly prefab in your project window, then you will see that its material is now red. So you can drag more onto the scene and of course they would be red. So have a little play around with this to get a grasp. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to change one of my lollies a little more. I'm going to make this guy blue. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees on X. Scale it to 0.75 and change its drag to 0.5 and push play cool it's blue it's bigger and it drops slower awesome so notice that there are blue bars to indicate changes on rigid body mesh renderer and scale but there's nothing for position or rotation unfortunately these are not tracked in prefabs you have to edit those instance by instance. Uh, it kind of makes sense since you're pretty much never going to have two of the same prefab in the exact same position, right? And when you're scripting to instantiate something into a scene, you would be specifying the position and rotation anyway. So again, you can click overrides and see the changes made. Uh, one more thing is if you have indeed overridden something like I have here for drag, Watch what happens when I edit the original prefab drag property to 5. As you can see, it doesn't change my overrides. My blue cube is still at 0 0.5. But I can still see the change in the override section. Alright, let me just change that 5 back to a 0. Okay, so you confused enough? Head about to explode? Just play with the prefabs and get used to them because you will be using them an awful lot in the end. Um, yeah, so let's move on to prefab variants. So prefab variants are, as the name suggests, they are prefabs that are similar to their parent master. Uh, think of the lolly prefab we just did as the master. You could create another prefab as a variant from it and its properties will filter down. In the example, we have three cubes that are all basically the same, only one is blue and acts a little differently. What if you wanted to put three or four more of those blue ones in the scene at a later stage? You only have the red prefab. Uh, yeah, you could make a new master prefab, but since it's the same shape and shares a lot of the same properties as the red cube, then wouldn't it be better to make a blue variant? So let's do that. Uh, let's first rename the blue lolly cube to something a little more useful. Let's make it lolly special. All right, now drag that lolly special from your hierarchy into your project prefabs folder. Now at the stage Unity realizes that you are trying to create a prefab from another prefab, so it will prompt you to create either an original or a variant. Select prefab variant. Now you will see that Lolly Special is still blue, but it has the shading on one side. Uh, it's also slapped the word variant on the end of the name in your prefabs folder. 
So it's a prefab, but it still inherits unchanged properties from Master Lolly prefab. You'll notice now if you click on Lolly Special in the hierarchy that the inspector window no longer shows the blue lines on the left that show overrides because this object is now its own prefab. So if we make any change to the Lolly prefab, as long as the same property wasn't altered in the variant, then it will filter through. So let's try it. Click on the Lolly prefab in your prefabs folder and change the tag. So click the tag drop down and select player. Now in the hierarchy, click the Lolly instance and you will see that it now has the tag player. Click the Lolly Special and it also has the tag player. Cool. So the master prefab has filtered down to the child. Now let's change something that has already been changed or is already different in Lolly Special. Well, we changed the drag to 0.5. So let's change that. Click the Lolly Prefab in the Prefabs folder and change the drag to, let's say, 0.1. Now again, click Lolly in the hierarchy and see that the change is reflected. Now click Lolly Special and you'll see that the 0.5 remains. So it will only filter down to the children if the values were unchanged. Now you can see the overrides in the child Lolly Special by looking at the prefab in prefab edit mode. To do that, you can either click the prefab in the prefabs folder and then select open in the inspector, or you can just double click the prefab in the prefabs folder. You'll notice that your hierarchy now only displays the prefab. You can get out of edit mode by clicking this little arrow here. So get into edit mode for Lolly Special and select overrides. If you click rigid body, you can see the difference and revert it or force the change back but as before. So as you can see these are rather cool and useful once you get used to them. Now if you feel like filling your head up some more then let's look into nesting prefabs. So you can also nest a prefab i.e. nest a prefab with another prefab. This can get a little tricky but if you think you have prefabs and variants sussed and want to give this a crack then let's go. Alright so first off Let's delete all of our instances from the scene to save any confusion. Right, let's create an empty object in the scene by right clicking the hierarchy and selecting create empty. Uh, let's give it a name. I'm going to call mine gobstopper. Reset its transform. Okay, so the first potential problem surfaces. The empty object is on the ground, but the cube was up in the air. I think its Y value was three. Um, so you can either move the empty object to have the Y value of three, or you could go back and edit the prefab lolly and change its Y value back to zero. I'm going to change my lolly Y back to zero. Um, this will just avert any potential problems later on because the empty is not centered where the cube is. Uh, normally I create my prefabs from within the empty, so I don't have that problem. Um, you don't have to do this, but it just makes things a lot easier. Now, drag Gobstopper into your prefabs folder to create a prefab. Now double click it in your prefabs folder to go into prefab edit mode. Now drag your lolly prefab that we created earlier into the hierarchy of Gobstopper. The lolly, as you can see, is dead center with Gobstopper because we made sure everything was set to zero in the transform. Now we want to add another prefab to the nest. Since we have no other prefabs to drag in here, we can just create one in the nest. Right click the hierarchy of Gobstopper and select 3D object and sphere. Rename it to heart and reset the sphere's transform. Uh, scale the sphere to 0.6, should position it uh, just inside the cube with a few bits poking out. Kind of looks a little bit like a gobstopper out of the old Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, give the heart a rigid body. Now drag the heart into your prefabs folder to create a prefab. Cool. 
So you just created a prefab nest. Now the properties of Lolly and Heart are still independent because they are separate original prefabs, but they are nested in an empty prefab named Gobstopper. Now back out of prefab mode and move the Gobstopper in the scene up in the air a good distance to drop. And press play. So you will notice that both parts are acting individually and separating. This is because they both have physics and Unity doesn't really know what to do or which one to use. Maybe. To fix this, we need to remove all physics from the nested items and add physics to the empty prefab gobstopper. So click on Lolly in your prefabs folder and delete its rigid body and collider. And do the same for heart. Click on heart in your prefabs folder and delete its rigid body and collider. And now we're going to click on gob stopper and add a rigid body and a box collider. Inside the box collider, uh, select the bounce material. Okay, and now press play. So the gobstopper is dropping intact and bouncing like we want, but it's not touching the ground. We forgot to edit the box collider boundaries. They will be bigger than the cube. Remember we uh, downsized the cube, it was half the size and the bounding box will be way bigger. So double click the gobstopper in the prefabs folder to edit the prefab and then click on the bounding box column to edit it. So as you can see, the box is bigger than the gobstopper cube. So to get it the size of the cube, we just need to scale it down. Uh, the cube scale, I think, was 0.5, so let's enter that. Here we go, perfect fit. Um, but it's only surrounding the box, so let's push play and see what happens. So it's, it's bouncing, it's better than it was before, but it's only bouncing when it hits the red parts. So depending on the shapes and models you end up using, you'll have to play around a little with things like these. In this case, it's a quick fix. Uh, we just add another collider, a sphere collider. Give it the material bounce also, and make sure that it surrounds only the hut. Uh, 0.3 should do it for the radius. Yep, that looks about right. And play. Cool. Now it bounces on the white part too. So at this point you could change things inside of Heart or Lolly's prefabs and the changes would be reflected inside Gobstopper. So we could change Heart's material to blue and boom, it's blue and gobstopper. So that's about it for prefabs. You can do some pretty clever things with them after some playing around. And later on when we start scripting, we will be using basic prefabs a lot. So in the next video, I think we might just get into scripting, coding, whatever you like to call it. Uh, we can finally start making some things happen. There are other things to cover, such as audio, particles, lighting, animation etc but i think as we move through scripting we will cover those gradually so i hope to see you in the next video